What's up everybody, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. In this video, we're gonna add a colored vignette, or really any vignette you want to, and in my opinion, this is even better than the old vignette tutorial on my channel, the old lens correction method. This method, we're gonna use gradients and rectangles and shapes, and it's a lot better. Give this video a like if you think the same as me. Let's get started. Here we are, of course, in Photoshop. And I have this picture by Lucian Colley from Unsplash.com. Just want to give a little shout out to that, that photographer. So we want to add a colored gradient of some sort to this image. I think I'm going to add like a reddish tone. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find my color. Now you can do this at any point in the tutorial or whatever you're creating, but I just hit the I key for the eyedropper tool and I'm going to find a color in here. For me, I'm going to take like a darker red color, maybe something like that. So now I have this color. I can actually double click on my color panel and pull up the color picker. I know it's this number right here and I'm going to go ahead and just copy that for now. Command or control C hit OK. So now I've got that little hex code copied. I can use that color later. We're going to create a rectangle the size of our artboard. If you don't know what the size of your artboard or canvas is, go up to image down to image size and you'll see it right here and the units 1920 by 1080 is what we got. So create this rectangle, click on your canvas, create rectangle. OK, I can do a specific size of 1920 by 1080 hit OK, making sure that's the same units it should be. Now we want to move it to the center. We want it to be overlapping everything on our canvas. So I'm going to select the Move tool, go up to Select All. That's Command or Control A. And then I'm going to use the Horizontal and Vertical Alignment tools here. And make sure you have your rectangle selected. That'll move it right into place. OK, Command or Control D to deselect. Now we've got this rectangle. I'm going to jump into the layer styles. I can do that with the effects panel down here, or my favorite way is just double clicking in the gray space to the side of the layer. Layer styles. Okay, we're on the blending options mode, and I actually want to take my fill opacity all the way down. So in Photoshop, you can't just say no fill on the rectangle. It's got to have a fill, like we had that red color, but I can get rid of it by just dragging down this advanced blending option here, fill opacity down to zero. Because we're gonna add a gradient overlay. Now if I check mark that guy, here he is, and we already have him sort of set up from before, but what we have here, we have blending modes. I like to check mark dither, that just helps with the banding in the gradient. And then we can select opacity, we can select our gradient, and the most important thing is you want it to be radial, okay? That's gonna give you that circular gradient around the edges. Let's click inside of this gradient here, and we can adjust the colors. I actually selected a new color at the beginning of this tutorial, so I'm gonna use that one instead. We want two colors here, or two little swatches, and we want them to be the same color. So I'm gonna double click on this little swatch, and that's not working, so I'm just gonna click on this little color image. That'll do it. Select this little hex code thing, and you can change this color to whatever you want. The most important thing, hit OK, is that both of these colors are the same color. That's going to get you a nice uh, transparent sort of gradient in the center. Command or Control V to paste my color in there. Hit OK. OK, so now we have these as the same colors. We want these here, which is our little transparency uh, swatches, to be different. So we want it to go from 0% opacity right here. You'll probably see it at 100. We want it at 0. And over here, we want it at 100. From there, we can just hit OK. And now if your gradient looks like this, you can just click this little reverse button to make it on the edges. Now we have a couple options here. Angle won't really do a whole lot. It looks like it does something. I actually don't know why because it should be a circle, but I usually use scale to help sort of scale this gradient out to my corners. The other thing you can do if we go back into the gradient colors is in between here, you can select sort of where or how much influence each of these little transparency sliders have on each other. So you have a couple different methods there of adjusting the choke of this gradient. I don't know if choke's the right word, but the, the sort of size of this gradient and where it blends into the image. You can, of course, change your blending mode as well. So we could add a color burn, which does a whole nother set of effects here. That goes a little bit beyond this, just the normal vignette. And we can, of course, adjust the opacity of our vignette. So if you don't want it so strong, we can bring that down a little bit. 
So hitting OK, we have this rectangle layer, and we have an effect applied to it, which is a gradient overlay. We could always turn that on or off if we want to, and we can also double click back on that to adjust that again. So that's pretty much it. Um, I use that all the time now instead of the lens correction sort of method. So if you've found my other vignette tutorial or ever watched it, don't use that method anymore. Use this one. It's, it's still le a legitimate method. It might work depending on what you're doing. But this way you could do a black gradient, a white gradient or vignette, a colored vignette, any sort of vignette. And I think you have a little bit more customization options in my opinion. I mean you can add blending modes, you can do all sorts of stuff and it's its own little layer. So you're not applying it to any sort of layer or object individually. It's sort of like a layer above those so you can really move it around. It's just it's just much more flexible in my opinion. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials. And I'll see you next time.